Number seven, Notre Dame on the road. And number 20, Texas A&M. A&M, two and a half in some places, three-point favorites. This is Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. on ABC. College game day will be there. Gentlemen, we certainly have no personal or financial interest uh, vested in this game, so I'm glad that we can look at this uh, objectively with no ulterior motives. Um, This game will not affect my mood for a whole week. No, no, definitely not. (laughs) Definitely not. No mental health is on the line uh, in in this game whatsoever. Um, My biggest question for this game, guys, is what does Texas A&M's offense look like under Colin Klein? We know that both of these teams are going to be stout defensively right Notre Dame has had a great defense for the past several years Marcus Freeman's a defensive minded guy Mike Elko has come to revitalize this Texas A&M defense that had started to slip under DJ Durkin and he said this offseason this is the most talented defense he's ever had in his coaching career game is at Kyle Field under the lights in front of what could be a historic crowd for a stadium in the state of Texas, but the defense feels like the given. What does this AM offense look like that at times under Jimbo Fisher was nearly unwatchable? Well, I mean, God, you hope it's fast, right? You hope this movement, you hope it's fast. You hope it's not guys standing around looking at each other, wondering what the play is, right? So, so that's kind of the first step. And I'm, I'm not trying to make my Aggie fans upset. Okay. You can peek up here on my shelf. I'm right there with you. Okay. I was upset by it too. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, this offense has to improve. It almost like statistically can't be worse than what Jimbo had it at. It was slow. It was inefficient. And you had really, really good players. This is according to, you know, a lot of sites, seventh best roster in the country in terms of just sheer talent. And so I I think this has to result in some success. If you have an offensive coordinator who can, you know, play modern football or like, you know, even just throw a couple of plays in there where you go, Hmm, that's interesting. And and so I think just schematically Colin Klein's, I think going to take this thing up a notch for the Aggies. I think the big question right now for the Aggies, and and this is kind of me, uh, I need to see who your playmakers are, right? Uh, I think there's a lot of guys who A&M fans could point at and go, Oh yeah, we've been really excited about him. Or like, Oh yeah, he had a really good game, but Anaya Smith is gone and Ruben Owens is out for the season. And so you have to start thinking like, okay, who's my, who's my big guy who I'm going to be able to lean on, right? Is it, is Le'Veon Moss going to be able to step up at the running back spot? Who's your receiver going to be that steps up? Is it the newcomer Cyrus Allen? Is it going to be, is it going to be Noah Thomas? Is it going to be Maseen Muhammad? Is it going to be like, there's lots of different players who you could point at and go, okay, he's shown promise, but I think you're still waiting for playmakers to step up. I think if you're really confident about your quarterback, some concerns about your offensive line, but you got to figure out your playmakers and you got to figure it out quick because that's a really, really good Notre Dame defense with a very talented secondary. Some of the best secondary players. I mean, you're going to see some of these guys go first round. Um, and, and I think that if you're not able to establish an alpha guy, right? The, Hey, throw me the ball on that third down, throw it to me in traffic. Doesn't matter. I'm going to find a way to come down with it and move the chains. If you don't establish that guy that can kind of fill the Anaya Smith role from the last several years, you're going to have a bad time early and you don't want to fall behind early against this Notre Dame team because you don't want to put yourself in a limiting situation in your playbook. I think the danger for AM, like you mentioned, is their offense seems like it's comprised of players who belong in the hall of very good, right? Right. Uh, but no standout elite. There's not an Evan Stewart on right. this offense anymore. Well, uh, and Donovan there might Green, be that guy. Just to be clear, he might exist, but AM doesn't know that yet. Right. Like Noah Thomas might be the next coming of Mike Evans. It could be possible, but we don't know that. We we just haven't seen that yet. And so there's no way to tell me definitively like, oh, because he caught a bunch of touchdowns against who cares last year, then he's going to be amazing. Like he, he missed a lot of last season. So you just don't know that he's there. So, Trey, you've got the questions uh, with the Aggies at wide receiver offensive line. It felt like it took a long time in fall camp for the Aggies to shuffle the deck and figure out where those starting five were going to play. I think four of those five were projected starters anyway, but now we've finally got their, their order set on the other side. Notre Dame also is looking at that offensive line, perhaps with a wary eye. It's not going to be a Joe Moore award uh, you know, nominee 
heading into the 2024 season. Charles Jagusaw, who's supposed to play left tackle, is now done for the year with a torn pectoral. So Notre Dame is going to be starting two true freshmen on this offensive line who will take their first collegiate snaps at Kyle Field at night against what should be a top five pass rush unit in the country. What kind of dangers is Notre Dame in with all of that coming at Riley Leonard at quarterback? Well, I have to say, and I'm glad you mentioned Riley Leonard right there because people forget a lot of the talk has been made about Connor Wegman's injury yeah. uh, last year. Riley Leonard is coming off a pretty significant injury as well. So mobility questions maybe for both of these quarterbacks. It seems like both are going to be healthy and ready to go, so I'm not really worried about either. Both are going to have to use their legs uh, because – the left side of the offensive line, as you mentioned, Mitch, both freshmen, Anthony Knapp and Sam Pendleton, a freshman, a redshirt freshman, respectively, making their first starts for Notre Dame at night at Kyle Field against Nick Scorton, Shamar Turner, et al. Right? It, it's 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 a it's a line change. You could go to the second or third line on the a and defensive line and still be more talented than a lot of teams starting units. So it's going to be fascinating to see how these offensive coordinators really scheme plays open. That That's mostly what I'm looking for in this game. How can the offensive coordinators, how can the play callers work around probable offensive line deficiencies to get some positive yardage? I think this game is going to be an absolute rock fight, guys. I'm not expecting a lot of points in this game. I don't know the over-under off the top of my head, but it could be almost any number, and I would take the under. Because it is, a, I'm expecting a defensive slugfest, I'm expecting a lot of plays being made in the backfield by both of these teams. The offense, 46 and a half, according to Mitch in our chat. Yeah, give me the under on that. I'm slamming the under because I, I just, it's going to be labored to move the ball. Not necessarily, not, not financial advice. That's exactly right. <laughs> Not necessarily because the play calling is bad. I mean, we saw labored play calling for Texas A&M for years under Jimbo Fisher. I don't think it's going to be because the play can't get in. I think it's just going to be because the going to be because the guys on the other side of the ball are really, really good, and you're not always picking them up when you're blocking. So whoever's offensive line can make more plays and keep their quarterback just a little bit cleaner and a little bit off the ground a little bit more often is going to win this football game in my mind. And I honestly couldn't tell you who that is this moment yeah. in time. I think both teams are concerned. Both coaches seem confident about the guys, at least in press conferences. So we'll see. It's going to be whoever wins that battle, your offensive line versus their defensive line, whoever's more productive there to me wins this football game. I do want to say real quick, I think that Notre Dame, and if I'm Notre Dame right now, the only thing that I've heard in like a lot of people breaking this down is that they've got freshmen on the offensive line and, and that, you know, they're going to get destroyed by these awesome defensive linemen. And that's probably true, but I want to say this in terms of schematics. I think that they're going to have a really good game plan for this. And I think it involves moving Riley Leonard. I think they're going to try to move him sideline to sideline. I think they're going to try to get him in some, you know, kind of bootleg situations or just moving the pocket situations where he can get out in space. And so while I do think the defensive line is going to be chasing him all night, He's fast enough and talented enough to get out of that stuff and create some plays. It's going to be on those Aggie linebackers to hit the sidelines quick so they can actually get into space and make tackles and and turn a, a play that could have gone for 10, 15 in an extended you know drive into a gain of two or three, and now we're fighting to play second and third down. It's going to be on guys like Torian York to get out there and, and make those plays. If they can't do that, that's a big thing that I'm looking for. If they can't do that and get outside – or if they get kind of messed up in the mush of, of the tackle box and all that, it's going to be a problem for the Aggies all night. And so I just want to address that because I feel like a lot of people have been leaning A&M on this and talking about the disadvantages for Notre Dame. They have a fantastic offensive coordinator and a very athletically talented quarterback in Riley Leonard. Riley Leonard, per Tyler Horka of Blue and Gold, uh, yeah, blueandgold.com, uh, one of the Notre Dame beats, says that Riley Leonard was 4-6 and six as a starter on the road at Duke. The wins came in front of an average crowd size of 36,292. There will be as many as three times that amount of people at Kyle Field on Saturday. So uh, certainly interested to see how Riley handles that. He's very familiar with Mike Elko. Mike Elko is very familiar with Riley Leonard. We'll see who's playing 40 chess on Saturday night. The picks for this one, guys, I am the lone... 
Texas A&M pick. I'm going to take the Aggies minus two and a half. I think this looks a lot like A&M Miami did from a couple of seasons ago where it's just an ugly rock fight. Nobody can score any points and A&M ultimately wins by a field goal. I'm not under any illusion that A&M doesn't have these question marks. This is simply a gut pick and a rubric pick for me, a great defense at home uh, usually ends up spelling success, especially when I think the quarterback battle is a wash, if not in favor of, of Connor Wegman and the Aggies a little bit. So I'll be the homer here. I'll take Texas A&M. I, I'll say this a couple weeks ago, fully on Notre Dame winning this game. And the more I've dug into it and the more I've thought about it, I've talked myself into the Aggies winning this. Maybe that just makes me extra sad Saturday night. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm going to take Notre Dame. Uh, maybe it's a guarding my heart pick. I don't know. But in the same way that you were, Mitch, I I was kind of in reverse. I was in on a winning this game for the last few weeks. And then this week, I've just kind of tapped the brakes just a little bit. I don't know that a is going to be ready. But uh, just too many questions on the offensive line. We didn't really talk about a You guys talked about uh, A&M's receivers. We didn't really talk about their secondary. I think there's a lot of new talent there, but – you know, if you bust one coverage in a game that not a lot of points are being scored, that's could be ball game, right? So just too many unknowns for me. I'm going to take Notre Dame plus 2.5, but Aggie fans don't get too down. I think that this, I, I think they'll play well, play close, and it, it'll be a sign of things to come. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to waffle on this a little bit. I think this feels like an Elko special. See Duke last year versus Clemson, where it just kind of he just kind of exploded hours. Now I know that his quarterback is Riley Leonard, and he's playing on the other side, but I'm gonna call it an Elko special, not a Leonard special. Um, and, and I think that AM's gonna find a way to win this one, but I am gonna pick Notre Dame to cover. I think this is gonna be a real tough back and forth for just just real you know hard fought game. Lots of great plays on both sides. Uh, I think it'll be ultimately pretty low scoring. I think the scoring will ramp up probably third and fourth quarters. I think, you know, beginning it's going to be a lot of energy and feeling each other out and sacks and big hits and all that stuff. But I do think later on in the game, there'll be some points to be had. And, and just for the drama's sake, I'm going to say that there's going to be one big play at the end of the game for Connor Wigman. He's, he's going to find a guy down the field and they're going to barely stretch it. a going to kick a walk-off field goal to win this thing by two. Give me something like 23-21, just something gross like that, that, that you know, <laughs> low scoring, hits the under, and, and just, you know, kind of leaves us sitting there going, wow, this is a this is a different team both sides. And and I think that it'll end up happening that way. Um, I think that they'll end up winning this game very, very close. I, I don't see either team winning this game by more than a couple of points. And so I'm going to take a to win, Notre Dame to cover, and that kind of lets me sit on the fence a little bit more than both of y'all. That's true. That is excellent fence sitting. There's no I, I practice. No doubt about it. Gracious, how about that?